All right, now that our Z assembly is threaded on the whole way, it actually took quite a while. Once I got the thread out the bottom of the uh, tool mount, uh, I went ahead and used a drill and stuck it on the end and just slowly cranked it up on a lot of speed. So that worked a lot better uh, instead of trying to turn it by hand. But there it is. It's quite a heavy uh, middle assembly, but we're ready to install our other rails. So you'll probably want to start with this axis, whichever it is. It would be the x-axis in my case, as this is the front. Um, so grab this and see. yeah, you want to go with the lower one. Stick it in here. Give it a tap. Set the bottom should come right out the other side. Then same for the other axis. gonna have to retension the, um, the rollers basically what you do is loosen up the belt uh, move them around or loosen up the bolt move them around and then uh, retighten them once they are tensioned properly so it does move pretty smoothly it's just a little bit harder than I like it to uh, this way is pretty good but uh, we will get that fixed so that is basically the frame right there. The next part is setting up the gantry and the motor mounts and um, well I guess the belts would be very last and wiring. But that's just the basic assembly right now and I'll show you how to move on to the next step. But before they do that, don't forget to replace your motor mount and uh, or your moat, your tool mount and tighten that down. So the other thing is don't forget to add a little lube to the threaded rod. Um, just like a white lithium grease is what I did. Uh, just to help it run up and down nice and smoothly. So after that, we'll move on to the next step. All right, for the next part, you're gonna need a stepper motor. Um, this piece right here, which is part of the gantry, uh, one of your one of your belt pulleys, not either pulleys, and four of the M3 screws that are used to mount the stepper motor. First off, you're gonna wanna grab the motor and insert it like in this direction. This is a pretty simple um, insert one of your M3 screws. Uh, get it red started. Don't tighten it down quite yet. Same for the cross corner. Next, grab your pulley, put the large end down. Grab your Allen key. There's a flat side on the shaft. Put the um, set screw on the flat side and make it top of the pulley flush with the top of the shaft. Tighten it down. Don't tighten it too far that you strip the set screw. And that is one of your um, motor mounts done. You might have to adjust the pulley in and out to get the, um, for the, like, wherever the belt ends up being. But uh, for now, that's a good starting position. You'll end up mounting it with the shaft pointing out um, pretty much just like that. And that clamps down the tubing. You want to make sure that's um, flush the outside, your conduit. And you'll use the three... Um, or actually four eighth inch bolts with the lock nuts that go in these actually I'm sorry two lock two eighth inch bolts with two lock nuts that have a little space on the back here to hold the nut just like a nut trap and you want to tighten that down against your belt will come underneath this bearing up around the pulley and down underneath that bearing to the end and that is what's gonna move your machine around same thing for the other side just in reverse so guys, the next part of the build is going to be installing the belts. 
As you can see, I got one, two, three belts on. I just have this one to do yet. Um, I also got some of the wiring in. I uh, just wired up the motors and then use this wire expandable mesh to cover it. Uh, I do have to extend this wire, cut it, cut it and extend it just a little bit, um, just so I can get to where my control box is going to be. And I also have to do the Z axis motor wiring. And then, of course, I'm going to be putting end stops in it because I'm going to be using it as a printer. But um, before we do that, I want to get the belts on. So I got three of the belts on. You just have to do this last one, and I'm going to show you how. Here's the remainder of my belt. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to grab your zip ties that come in the pack. And you can use, you will need these, but I'm going to use two of these smaller ones just because it makes it look neater. But go ahead and make a loop like that. And then you'll want to make you take the belt and push the teeth together and just make just a nice quarter inch loop. And then insert the zip tie. And just for cosmetic purposes and um, neatness, try to put the head so it's facing the teeth. That way it's facing down. It just looks a little neater. And then pull that as tight as you can get it. Use a clippers or a side wire cutter. Chop the tail off. You have a nice little loop right there. Next, you want to grab one of your large zip ties that come in the pack, put it through the loop, and bring it over to the end here. Let's get around here. And you want to insert the point of the zip tie through this um, hole right here in the end piece. Loop it around and give it a few clicks. Now, just pull on the belt and tighten the zip tie until when you pull on the you want it fairly tight um, you, if you pull on the belt the belt should just so not touch the plastic and then that's that don't touch that zip tie you can go ahead and clip the tail off uh, I'm just gonna wait to do that and then the other end of your belt is where you're gonna be adjusting it so grab the other end of your belt and loop it underneath this bearing and over this pulley but I told you I told you to put these pulleys on which what you're supposed to do is just you need to flip them 180 degrees I'm gonna take this off here and flip it 180 degrees so the fat part with the set screws is facing out pull your belt through make sure that it's not twisted at all just like that and go over top of the pulley and down underneath this other bearing down here just like that and again make sure you don't have any twisted spots uh, which we do here there we go and it should look like that it should come underneath the bearing over the pulley underneath and this pulley uh, if you let it loose as you move the belt it will center it where it's supposed to be and then you come back later and tighten it onto the shaft to lock it down so you just want to let this loose so it can slide in and out for right now Next, we need to go fasten the other end. So I'll show you what we're going to do then. Next, you want to grab the end of your belt, and you're going to want to make a little loop with your zip tie. Again, I'm using these smaller ones. And you're going to want to loop it, I found. Make your loop. I'm going to have a little extra here. But let your make it so your loop is a little bit before this piece of plastic. So... Um, right about there, about a half inch away from this plastic is a good starting point. Again, try to put your zip tie so the head is facing down. And tighten it up on the loop. Letting just a big enough loop for the zip tie to go through. And tighten that down. I'll come back and trim the tail off um, this belt. You can just use uh, cutters like I did there. Grab another large zip tie and insert it from the outside in through the belt loop insert the point through the hole in the plastic piece and now you want to be careful here you just want to give it one or two clicks just so it stays in place and then you want the head um, on this flat piece right here and then this is how you're going to tension the belt um, you're just going to keep clicking it one or two clicks at a time uh, you want to make sure you do both sides so they get a tension exactly even. And then you just want to keep tensioning it to where it's 
has a nice twang to it, kind of. Um, you'll feel it, kind of. If you have them too loose, they'll vibrate around. But if you have them too tight, it's just going to be really hard to move. So just keep giving it one click at a time until you hit a nice soft spot. Um, if you go too tight, you can just clip a zip tie and use another one. So definitely keep a few of those on hand for the first couple weeks. So you can see these make a little vibration noise, which means they probably need tightened up a little bit yet, um, which I will do. But if we move this carriage, it seems to be fairly nice and it seems to move fairly smooth. Um, yeah, it does. So next you're going to want to tighten the pulley on your stepper motor. So turn the shaft to where the flat side is and then you want to move it back and forth so the pulley gets centered. And you want the set screw, one set screw to be exactly in the middle of the flat of the shaft. And then tighten that set screw, being very careful not to move the pulley in and out. And then go around and tighten the other one that's 90 degrees from it. You can do the same on the other side over here. Move your carriage back and forth a little bit. Uh, make sure your belt's not trying to like ride up over the side of the pulley. Make sure it's pretty much centered in the pulley. And that's pretty much your belt. Um, you can see the belts are flopping there. You can probably use a few more clicks. Um, just pull the carriage to one side. Try to make sure your belts are tensioned evenly. Got a little better there. And I would say that is pretty good. Um, just move my wire there. So I'll probably have to retension them, and you, after you run the machine for a while, they'll probably the belts will stretch a little bit. You have to give them a click or two, and just to tighten them back up. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty easy belt tensioning system. Pretty cheap. But there are modified blocks that other people have remixed from his design that use a screw that you can tension, which is a pretty good idea. Um, but again, I bought these parts and I'm just using them. And I'm setting up the machine like he has it set up. So um, that's it for the belts. I'm going to have to extend the wiring on this and then I'll show you um, how to wire up the motherboard. And as I speak, I'm printing out the case for the LCD screen and the uh, um, motherboard and Arduino ramps but after that's done uh, I'll wire it up and show you how to um, run your wiring I also am going to add limit switches to this since I'm going to be using it as a printer so I will be doing that in another video so stay tuned for upcoming videos